Welcome back. I'm Dave, and thanks for your questions on our last piston video. Here are a few more piston FAQs that you've sent in. A lot of your questions have revolved around compression ratio and a piston's role within compression ratio. So first, we really need to define what compression ratio is. Compression ratio is a measurement of engine cylinder volume. It's basically a comparison of the engine cylinder's volume with the piston at bottom dead center with its volume with the piston at top dead center. So if an engine cylinder had a volume of 100 cubic inches with the piston at bottom dead center and a 10 cubic inch volume with the piston at top dead center, the compression ratio would be 10 to 1. So what factors play a role in compression ratio? Well, there's a lot of factors. There's engine bore size, stroke, piston head volume, even head gasket thickness. Summer Racing has taken a lot of the guesswork out of calculating compression ratio by putting a compression ratio calculator on its website under the Expert Advice tab. So how do pistons fit in with the compression ratio equation? Well, they're a huge part of the puzzle. Specifically, the compression height, which is measured as the area from the center of the wrist pin hole to the piston deck, and the piston head volume, which is the area over the deck and can include the dish or the dome of the piston. These two areas make up the physical size of the piston and determine how much volume of air the piston will move. Another question we hear quite a lot is what is piston to valve clearance? Well, just like it sounds, piston to valve clearance is the area between the valves and your piston when the piston is at top dead center. You don't want these two components to ever touch, the valves and the piston, or else you're going to have yourself a really, really bad day. So you want to take the time to check proper clearances between the valves and the piston by claiming the valve pockets on the piston. Now, the amount of clearance, minimum clearance, varies by manufacturer, but a lot of places such as Wiseco recommend eight one hundredths of an inch on the intake valve and one tenth of an inch on the exhaust valve. Another measurement you need to know is piston to wall clearance. What is piston to wall clearance? Well, simply that's the area between the piston and the cylinder wall. There needs to be a minimal amount of clearance between the two to prevent the piston from binding up in the cylinder once it expands at full operating temperatures. Now, minimum piston to wall clearance, as recommended by manufacturers, varies by the manufacturer depending on the piston material used. Most of the time, the minimum piston to wall clearance recommended by the manufacturer is geared toward naturally aspirated street engines. Now, if you have a higher horsepower engine or a forced induction engine, you're going to want to err on the side of caution and use the maximum piston to wall clearance recommended by your manufacturer. If you've got more questions related to pistons or any other high performance topic, please share your questions in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. For more quick flicks, visit the Summit Racing YouTube channel. Visit Summit Racing online at www.summitracing.com. Follow on Twitter at twitter.com slash summit racing or like Summit Racing on Facebook at facebook.com slash summit racing equipment.